everyone, Live It Like Lisa here and welcome to my keto vlog week four. So this week's vlog I thought I would share with you a week's worth of dinners that we've been having. They're all keto friendly, all low in carb and all super filling and super delicious. So uh, I won't chat too much because quite a lot of this video is just me showing you uh, the dinners or showing you how I make them and yeah so I hope you enjoy and maybe it give, gives you some ideas on the types of foods you can be eating if you're joining in on my keto journey with me. So without further ado let's get into the dinners. dinner, a hamburger patty, bacon, asparagus and scrambled egg. So Tuesday night we just did a pan fried salmon in some butter and just a basic garden salad with a little bit of cucumber, lettuce, tomato and onion. Very simple but so delicious. Wednesday night we did a pork roast on the barbecue and teamed that with some broccolini and kale that was just pan fried in some butter and garlic and with a bit of sauerkraut on the side and some mustard. So tonight's dinner we are having a Vietnamese beef pho soup. So it's super, super easy. It's a one pot meal and it's really delicious. And it's relatively low in carbs, like there's nothing in it. Uh, it does have rice noodles, but you put the rice noodles in each individual's bowl and then you pour the soup and meat and everything else on top. So obviously if you're doing keto, you skip the rice noodles and just have the beef with the vegetables and the soup stock. But because my kids, they are still having carbs, they can have their rice noodles. So yeah, I'll show you how it is made. And yeah, let's get started. So first you're gonna need two one liter beef stock. So two liters of beef stock. So this beef stock, just for you guys, in, for your guys information, it's got two grams of carbohydrates per one cup. So in this whole thing, there's eight grams of carbs. So when you put two of these in, you've got a total of 16 grams of carbs, but that's gonna then be shared out amongst four people. So you're roughly looking at about four grams of carbs in this whole meal. And there's nothing really else added to it apart from meat, some herbs, mushroom, and some onion. So it's quite a very tasty low carb meal. You then add two full cups of water to that, about three stars or three of these star anise, just throw them in. You want a couple of cloves, so a couple of cloves, a cinnamon stick, lightly bruised so just sort of knock it with a knife crush it a little bit with a knife so just like that add that to the stock i've just got half an onion here so that will do just cut into slices and you want a couple of cloves of garlic so these ingredients are just all to flavour the actual stock. 
you remove these before you put your meat and everything in. Okay, so that's our stock now. That's ready to go on to boil. So we'll put that on now and wait for that to come up to a boil. Okay, so while the stock is waiting to boil, we'll chop up the rest of the vegetables that will go in at the very end just to warm up. You don't actually cook them in it. You want some coriander? And you just pull those off the leaves. These are just gonna go in the soup at the very end. You also want some mint leaves as well. Just break the leaves off, same as the coriander. And some basil. And then you want your bean sprouts. We normally just put it on a big platter like this and then everyone can just help themselves and put whatever they want in their soup. And not to forget some hot chili. Obviously to taste, my kids don't like too much chili. I love it. And these are extremely hot. Okay, once that's come to the boil, um, I've just put it onto a smaller element so it's just gonna simmer. You want to add a third of a cup of fish sauce. I also add just a drop of sesame oil, not too much. And then just about a quarter of a cup of lime juice. So this is a third cup here, so I'm gonna just put a little bit less. And I also added a little bit of pepper as well. While that's just simmering, we we'll prepare the meat. Now we just use any sort of like sandwich steak or fillet. This one's like a beef sizzling steak. It's just very thinly sliced. That's what you want, is just really thinly sliced steak. And because me and my husband are not having any rice noodles, we're putting like extra meat. So you wouldn't normally need this much meat in your <laughs> soup, but yeah, if you're not having if you're not having the rice noodles, you may as well. So I just cut those into sort of small pieces. So now what I do just before I put the meat in, I scoop out, leave the onion, the onion's fine as much as you can, but I just scoop out all of those flavor flavor pieces just so you're not eating them so now just with the heat off I just put in all the meat um, and then we serve it straight away and that's because it's so thin the heat of the soup will cook the meat hopefully hopefully there'll be some left over and I can take some for my lunch tomorrow at work see how the meat's already cooking in the soup and that's with the heat off now so that's why you want it fairly thin. And so for the people that aren't eating keto or that do eat carbs, these are the... You call them the fat now. What are they called? The, are they not egg noodles, rice noodles? You pretty much just put them in a bowl, pour some boiling water over the top and just let them soften. Put that your shit. Is it nice? And there you go, guys. That's uh, Vietnamese beef pho soup minus the rice noodles and basically keto friendly. So I think in the whole bowl, you're probably lucky to have about five grams of carbs all up. So that's, um, yeah. And at the bottom of that is heaps of meat. So yeah, ready to enjoy. So Friday night we did some pork chops on the barbecue and we fried up some eggs and topped them off with cheese and also cooked, fried up some asparagus in butter and garlic as well. So Saturday night we had fried salmon again in some butter 
and paired that off with a huge plate of mixed greens. So different lettuces um, mixed all together and I just basically had that with a bit of salt and pepper on. I didn't even put any dressing on it. It was so nice. Okay, so here's tonight's dinner. We have my husband's eight hour smoked brisket and some beans and broccolini cooked in butter and garlic. Can't wait to tuck into this meal, I am starving. Well, I hope that gave you some ideas on the types of foods you can enjoy on keto. Uh, you don't have to be scared of cooking in butter. Butter makes everything delicious. So we cook nearly everything in butter now. It is just so nice. I don't have to worry about portion sizes. I don't have to count calories. I don't have to do any of that. Just basically eat until I'm full and stop once I'm full. Like just listen to your body. It, um, for me, it's that's one of my biggest problems. That's one of the biggest reasons why I'm so overweight is my portion sizes. Uh, I definitely was eating way more than I should have been eating. But on this diet, because you're eating foods that satisfy you uh, so much because they're high in protein and high in fat, you, you don't like you, you don't have that craving to eat more than you need. And that's what I've found has really been helping me with this diet. Like the minute I start to get that really full sensation, I just stop and leave it. And that way, if I do have any food left over on my plate, then I've already got my lunch sorted for the next day. So it kind of kills two birds in one stone. If I don't end up eating everything, then I'd, I've already got my lunch prepared. I don't have to make anything special for lunch. So that's really been working out well for me. And I mean, as you can see from what I've been eating, like I'm definitely not struggling. <laughs> like it's delicious food, it's so nice and the kids are really enjoying it as well. So if you're still unsure about whether it suits you or not, I would just maybe start with just switching your dinners to keto friendly dinners. Just cutting out the carbs on your main meal. I mean, as you can see, there's so much you can still eat. That's the biggest thing that I think has made a little bit of a switch in my head is like, I'm not focusing on all the stuff I'm missing out on. I'm focusing on the stuff I can eat. If I'm feeling like something sweet, I'm not going, oh damn, I can't eat chocolate or I can't eat this, I can't eat that. I say to myself, okay, what can I eat that is sweet tasting and still allows me to stay in ketosis and there's not too many carbs. If I am feeling like a sweet treat, I'll have a little bit of dark chocolate with some thick cream, uh, dip that, the dark chocolate in some thick cream and have that, that's perfect. Uh, strawberries and cream, strawberries by themselves, a few berries, all of those sort of things, they're fine. You, obviously, you don't want to eat a bucket of them, but satisfy that sweet craving. That, that, That's what I find has been the biggest change for me, is just focusing on the stuff I am allowed to eat. I feel like something salty and I really, really want some chips or something like that. I just go, okay, well, I'm not having the chips. What can I have to substitute? I can have macadamia nuts. I can have pork crackles. I can have some uh, prosciutto and cheese and stuff like that. So that will satisfy that salty craving if you have it. But to be honest, I haven't even been craving anything. Like, I mean, my, my daughter, Jessie, she's been on a cooking rampage for the last week or so. I think every single day this week, she's cooked either um, cupcakes, a cake, or some homemade biscuits and stuff like that. You know, as much as I used to love eating them, I just haven't even felt tempted to eat them. Like that she's been cooking them for herself and Michael and Jamie and they've been enjoying them, but I honestly haven't even felt like one and I haven't felt like I'm missing out either, you know? So uh, definitely something has changed in me this time around because four weeks now, well, this is week four, I don't think I've ever stuck to a diet without like not failing or cheating, but you know what I mean? Without sort of sneaking in something that I really shouldn't be eating. This is the first time I've gone this long without actually 
cheating as such i'll say cheating even though you know you're not really supposed to think of it that way but i was doing weight watchers i would play like there'd always be some times when i'm like oh i'll just eat a whole block of chocolate and whatever you know what i mean like just sabotaging myself but this time round, i've just really yeah it's just seems so easy this time round. I, I don't know if it's just my determination has changed or what has actually changed but it's it's so oh I, I just feel so good and i just feel so positive that it's actually going to work this time i'm just oh every week i just get so excited to step on the scales and just see you know if, if there's been a change and everything so well that speaking of stepping on the scales i guess it's time to weigh in and hope for the best so yep yeah, let's head on over to the scales now and see What's this week's results? Well, I'm super happy with that. Another 800 grams down. That's nearly another kilo gone. So it's certainly heading in the right direction and I definitely haven't been suffering. I definitely haven't been suffering in the eating department. I've been enjoying everything I've been eating and yeah, it's it's just, oh, I'm so wrapped. <laughs> I hope you guys that are joining me on it are, are enjoying it as much as I am. I, I'm actually just so excited, not so much to, I mean, obviously to lose the weight and to be smaller, but just to get healthier you know i'm really really looking forward to getting healthier again and just doing what's right for my body because especially at my age now i'm in my 40s i yeah it 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 comes a time when everything will start catching up on you if you don't really start looking after yourself so um that's my biggest motivation more than anything is just to get myself healthy you know i've i've always struggled with high blood pressure uh, even as a, a young kid like when I was about oh, 14 or 15, I was super skinny, super fit. Like I was probably only about 45 kilos as, as a teenager. And I used to run everywhere and was doing lots of exercise. Um, and I still always had borderline high blood pressure. So um, I think back then it used to be like 140 over 90 or something like that, even as a, a young kid. So. You can imagine what my blood pressure is like now being an adult and being way overweight and way unfit so yeah the last couple of times i've been to the doctor it's not been good and i'm not on any medi medication for it um i don't really like taking medication i mean i know it probably is best in that situation none of the doctors have actually said i should be on it at this stage um one of them probably has suggested that if you know I, I, it doesn't come down i probably should start thinking about it but yeah i'm i'm all for trying to fix the situation fix the problem with what's causing the problem you know not just get medication on top of me not fixing the problem if that makes sense so you know rather than just staying fat eating the wrong foods and staying unhealthy and unfit and just taking medication to control it i'd rather try and control the factors that are causing it in the first place so being overweight eating the wrong foods not exercising if i can do all that and i'm down to a decent size and i'm fit and i'm healthy and it's still high then i can say well maybe it's a good idea to start taking some medication but I, I truly believe for myself that, yeah, I'd rather try and fix it myself before having to resort to medication. So that's what um, that's what's motivating me a lot of this as well is to get it, get myself sorted out before I'm needing medication, basically. So, yeah, um, well, I, I don't really want to ramble too much in today's vlog. I hope you guys that are joining me on my journey are going just as well and i just i hope my videos can help motivate you and give you some ideas and tips and just like sharing the journey with you maybe helps you 
keep going with your own journey and things like that so that that's i mean that's what i really would hope anyway so i will post this video notification up on my facebook page today and feel free to comment underneath that video on the facebook page if you want to get to know other people that are um, subscribers that are joining me on the keto journey feel free to introduce yourselves to each other and have a chat with each other and share your journeys with each other as well over there um, and you're more than welcome to comment down below as well on this video but yeah if you want a more of a close-knit private setting definitely head on over to my facebook page i'll leave a link to the the channel my facebook page below just so it's easier for you for you to find and yeah you can just comment underneath the video post that i put for this i'm going to try and work out how to change my facebook settings so that people can just comment post status updates on my page as well i have to have a look through the settings i'm sure there's a way to do it because currently at the moment i think i'm only the one i'm the only one that can post on the page but then people can then just comment under that post so i'll see if there's a way to change the settings so that it allows people to comment on the actual uh, page itself so if yeah i mean but for now just comment as you like underneath the video and yeah we can catch up there so i hope you guys are having a great week next week i will probably do a um maybe some snack ideas so like when for yeah i think next week i'll do a video on the types of snacks that i've been enjoying so like you know if you're sitting down watching tv and you want some nibbles or you just want something in between meals uh some nice snack ideas sweet and savory that you can enjoy while you're doing keto and i think next week too because it's been one whole month now that i've been doing keto i'll do a whole like one month update so i'll do like a, another measurement around my waist and hips like i did at the very beginning i'll do a full body shot so you can sort of see me from front and sides and back and um, i'll do like a total weight loss so from the beginning till now uh, how much has like you know how much i've lost through that whole one month period so yeah stay tuned for that and i will see you guys in my next one good luck guys have a great week and stay positive thanks for watching